Hello guys, today I want to talk to you about how to map your Minecraft world. Now, 10 years ago, something like this might have been good enough, but today we can do so much better. And I want to show you the process that I go through when I make my maps that look like this for my Minecraft world. I'm going to give you all the resources I use, my process, my technique, and everything you need to be able to do the same for your own worlds. So without further ado, let's get into it and start talking about MCA Selector. All right. So if you follow the link in my description to the GitHub site for MCA Selector, you should get to a site that looks like this. What you have to do is scroll down until you see download version 242 Windows installer. Once you've downloaded this exe file, open it and do some basic setup. Once you're done with the setup, it should look like this and we'll finally have our MCA selector open. You should have this kind of dark gray grid with a bunch of lines on it. Go to file, open the world you want to, and give it a minute for it to load in. Once it loads in, you should be greeted with something that looks like this. This is my Tredegor province world, and you can see we started the video just around here. We get a full view of the world as if you had taken it with a bunch of Minecraft maps, but it saves you a ton of time. What you should do is then go to the view tab, and remove some of these grid lines. And then we can click save screenshot. You're gonna to wanna to save this to your downloads with a title, something like MCA selector with the name of the date. Once you've done that, go into your downloads and open the file. It should look like this, and then you can use the edit function to trim it to whatever size you want. At the most basic level, you have now just made a map of your Minecraft world. If you gave this to someone else, they'd be able to walk around your world and roughly know where things are. I know we can do a lot better than this though, so why don't I take us over to Incarnate so I show you how I do the next step of the process. Incarnate is a map making software that allows you to make maps using a set of tools and assets. Now there's a free version, which is pretty minimalistic, or you can go for the pro version, which is about five USD a month. Personally, I get the pro version once every couple months that I can make the maps I want, and then I get rid of my subscription. This is what my account looks like. You can see that I have made a lot of maps, and this isn't even all of them. These are just the ones that I have saved on this account, and I have a couple other accounts. I'm really big into map making. For this though, what I'd like to do is create a new map. We'll get to a screen that looks like this, and I like to go for a parchment world. Here we can decide the resolution that we want to work with and the aspect ratio as well. Opening up Incarnate, we're going to get greeted with something that looks like this. And we can close a couple of these tabs right away because we don't really need these. What we need to do is go to the stamp tool. Now the stamp tool is a bunch of custom assets that are already included with the software. But what we want to do is click open catalog and go to a place where we can upload our own stamps. So if you see this upload button here, we're going to go to our downloads. Be warned that you may have to compress the image a couple times in order to fit it into the software. But once you do, you can do this to open the image and stretch it across your canvas. Now that you've done this bit, the real map making can start. You're going to want to reduce the opacity of this to about 33%. And in doing so, you'll be able to trace over the image. So what you should do is then go to the mask tool, click add, and use the bucket fill feature to paint in the whole image. Once that's done, you can go to the subtract feature, edge, and start subtracting. Now this is what I meant about tracing. We can still see the original image underneath, and now what we need to do is reduce the brush size just a little bit and start working at our coastlines. Once we have a general idea, we can go a little bit finer and start subtracting even a little bit more with a much smaller brush to make sure that we're getting all the angles that we want, especially when it comes to rivers. Here we can see that there's a river that extends down into this area, so we can go through and with a little brush, just subtract that area. Now, if we repeat this for the whole image, we'll start to get an idea of where our coastlines are. And this is really important for mapping out the rivers and the coastlines, of course, uh, but it's also gonna start to give us an indication of the distance of things. 
And this is where we can start going in with some of our other tools. By clicking on the brush tool, we can decide what we want the basis of our map to look like. I'm gonna open the catalog and then go to Fantasy Regional. This is just gonna get us a couple more things we can use. So let's go to Grasslands. This is a nice one, it's called Pasture Green, and we can start painting in the foreground. The foreground basically means anything that isn't water. At the same time, we can come in with another brush, let's say Barren Lands. This looks like a nice pale desert, and we can do this area here. Now, obviously I'm going through this quickly, but you can take as much time and finesse as you like. Lastly, what I wanna do is go over the watery areas. We'll pick a nice deep blue, switch to background, meaning the water, and we can start to paint that in. Now, it's important every once in a while that you start to check in on what your map really looks like. So let's zoom out, click this, and completely reduce the opacity. So this is so far what we're working with, and you can see that it's really starting to take shape. If you do this for your whole map, you're gonna end up with an idea of where your major biomes are and your bodies of water in your rivers. But there's a lot more to your map than that. Increasing the opacity again, we can see that there are areas that are full of trees. So why don't we go into our custom stamps and start working on our trees. Going over, we can open our catalog again, going into Parchment World, and why don't we go for some trees? Looks like there are some pretty generic ones, so we can explore some other options. How about Fantasy World? Our Fantasy World will give us the opportunity to use some really colorful ones. I like these pine trees, so why don't we reduce the size a lot and start sprinkling some of these around. The easiest way to place these is by doing them multiple at a time. So we can click multiple, select an area, and a density. 100 seems to be a pretty good bit, and as we go like this, we can see that the area is filling with pine forests. Now in the real world, this is all uh, regular oak forests in Minecraft. So you wanna be careful that you're not doing something that doesn't represent the actual world. But with that done, we have a good idea of what the biomes around this place look like. If we come back in though, we can see that this is technically a town. So why don't we look at some more stamp options and see what we can't get. Coming down into some of these settlement options, we have the Nordic settlements. I think this one looks nice. I think it's gonna represent the town of Anchorage quite nicely, but we still have our multiple stamps set up. So why don't we go like this? And for the moment, we can reduce the opacity again of our big stamp here. So reducing that, we can then come to this little stamp, increase the opacity and see that it's still pretty big. Unfortunately, our trees also have reduced opacity, so why don't we zoom out, and then we can select all the stamps from this set, meaning all the trees. We can then go in and edit them so that they all have the right opacity. Coming to this town now, it's looking a little bit big in this area, so we can reduce the scale just a little bit and set it on this nice little place here. A town wouldn't be fully done without a name though, so why don't we give it a nice name? We'll go into our text tool and call it Anchorage, like the real town of Anchorage in my world. This is a fine label, but if we zoom out, we might see that it's a little small, depending on the size of our map. So we can increase the size a little, bring it down, and maybe we don't want an outline on this. We can put a shadow instead to make sure that it doesn't blend against the background, and we can try to increase the size a little bit of this village to match the scope. If our village is looking a little bland, we can increase the saturation a bit, and maybe the brightness too. Zooming out now, we start to get an idea of where things are in the world. But this isn't everything. We know that in our real Minecraft world, we have a bunch of paths. So why don't we go back to the original image? Now that we have our image again, we can see that there are some paths around here, but they're a little bit hard to see, so we can remove some of these stamps first. Now that we have the roads clear, we can come back in with our line tool or our path tool. Either one will do the job. I like to go for dotted lines because they give a little bit more wiggle room to get the lines a bit wrong. But we can come back through here 
and we can disable the shadows. This way we don't have any blurring. We have some white dotted lines and what we can do is come in and draw where we made our path in the Minecraft world. So following that brown line, we can come to around here and then it looks like there's another path that comes in and loops back around this area. And then one that comes into Anchorage itself, which is a bit hard to see, but we know roughly where it is from our world. With that done, we now have all the basics necessary in order to make our map. There are a couple more things we can add if we want, like a scale or a compass. Coming into our stamp options, we can open the catalog and search the word compass. We'll get a couple of pretty nice options. I like this one. Coming down, we can put it someplace where there isn't anything important in our world, and then open our text tool again. Lastly, I want to label our map, so we're going to go back into the text tool and write Tredegor Province. We're going to increase the size a bunch, and let's put it somewhere that it isn't too intrusive. It looks like if we put it up here, it's going to block the view of Castle Leslie. So we can go back in, make sure that it's formatted correctly, and then place it in this upper corner here. With that, we have the basics of our map fully done. And I'm going to flip over to our actual map to show you what the real Tredegor province world looks like. First, though, we need to make sure that we save this. We'll click Save and call this Tredegor province with the date. Once it's saved, we can then exit this map and go to the real Tredegor province. We can see here some of the things that I was talking about, like going back in and smoothing out the coastlines, making sure that you paint in all your world, using a bunch of stamps and assets to make sure you know where the biomes are, and making sure that all the roads in your world are really clear. Now, I know not everyone wants to spend $5 on making their own map, so why don't we explore some free options? Krita is a free drawing and animating software. It's a bit like GIMP if you've used that, or like Photoshop even. So by clicking the Windows installer, we can go through the same process we did for MCA Selector and get Krita on our devices. Opening up Krita, we'll get greeted with something that looks like this, and we can click File, Open, and open our MCA Selector world. Over here, we can create a new layer over the old one, and make sure that the old layer is at 33% opacity. And make sure the one with lowered opacity is over the full layer. We can go through the same thing with tracing over all of our borders. So I'll show you briefly. You can come over to your brush presets, pick whatever brush you like, make sure it's set to black, and go to the layer you want to be drawing on. Then you can come in and just draw over the coastlines like you did on the other map. And you can go through the same process that you did, just doing it a bit more manually and with a few less tools. When it comes to assets, I'm going to show you two sites that you can use to get a bunch of free assets in order to decorate your map the same way you would if you were using Incarnate. Now there are a bunch of options to find free assets for your world, but these are just two free ones that you can look at. I will warn you though that most of these are copyrighted in some way that you shouldn't be making money off of maps you use with someone else's assets. The first of these sites is Cartography Assets, so we can go into Search Products and type in something like Fantasy World. Coming into here, you'll get created with a bunch of search results and just make sure that your price is set to free. So here we have it. We have some free assets like these mountains. Two Minute Tabletop is a really similar site. Both of these have a bunch of paid options, but also a bunch of free options. Now I've already downloaded some, so why don't we flip back onto Krita and I'll show you how you can do it. Coming back to Krita, we are back on this layer that we've been working on. And what we can do is click layer, import layer, and go to whatever assets we downloaded. I think it would be nice to start with some of these castle ones. So once we have these layers imported, we can transform a layer and make sure that we shrink it. And doing this, we can slowly start to make our very own maps, just like we would if we were using Incarnate. Before I leave you now, I want to talk about some of the things you really need to think about when you're making a map. Number one is purpose. Of course, what is the purpose of the map you're making? I know a lot of you are world builders or people interested in stuff like anthropology and political science. But if you're making a map of a Minecraft world, you should really consider whether you're making it for world building or whether you're making it for navigation. People who are trying to navigate your Minecraft world don't really care where the religious borders are. They want to know, once I've spawned in, how do I get from one place to another? 
where are the roads? Where are the big towns? Uh, what's the order I should be going to places? Stuff like that. Now, if you're talking about world building, there are some really interesting things you can include. Obviously, like I mentioned, there are things like politics, religion, and culture, which I've included in a ton of my own maps. You can talk about economics and trade. You can make a height map or some sort of geological map. Or you could even make a map about population density in your Minecraft world. My advice to you, though, is that if you're just going to make one Minecraft map, make it the one that's really representative of your world. Don't include stuff that isn't there. Don't include extra settlements that are uh, theoretically there or towns that are bigger than they really are. Just show things as they would be represented in your Minecraft world. Make it actually useful to people trying to understand what they're seeing in the game. Show it in the architecture. Show that the architecture of a place like Regensburg is different than that of a place like Clarendon, because they have some sort of cultural divide. If you're talking about economics and trade, make sure you put in factories and mines and farms. Put in all the resources that you're actually talking about. If a place has diamonds, put in a diamond mine. And make sure you put in a bunch of things like trade caravans and ships that actually show the movement of these trades and these economics. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and comment. And feel free to pop into the Discord and show me the maps that you guys have made of your own Minecraft worlds. I'd love to see them. That's all for today though. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.